Thanks for stopping by. This is Ars Poetic and I'm just a dude who really loves to play video games. This video is part of a larger full length review that I created. If you want to check that out, the link will be in the description. Let's get to the video. Let's go over some of the special features and post launch upgrades. If you're familiar with the acclaimed Japanese director Akira Kurosawa, you'll know that he has made several samurai films with a particular style that is iconic. The Sucker Punch devs have thrown in a Kurosawa mode, which makes the game completely black and white, giving off that aesthetic feel of a Kurosawa film. This is an awesome feature and it looks great, but at the same time I feel like taking away the vivid colors this game offers is like eating ramen without the broth. The artistic vision is just so heightened by the use of color, especially when viewed on a nice display. The photo mode in this game is fantastic for those that enjoy that sort of thing. I've used it myself to create wallpapers and they look stunning. There are all sorts of modifications to be messed with here. Camera angles, color adjustments, wind speed, wind direction, weather, time of day, particle effects, etc. Check out the link in the description if you'd like to see all of the patch notes released thus far, courtesy of the Ghost of Tsushima wiki. Let's talk about the big details here. If you have the option, playing on the PS5 is the best way to play this game right now. You essentially get a locked 60 frames per second during high resolution mode, which is great. They had previously allowed this frame rate boost to 60 when playing the game in backwards compatibility mode back when the PS5 first came out. This was already awesome. However, the most recent official PS5 upgrade boosts up the resolution further, making the presentation look crisper. The official PS5 upgrade also brought along haptic feedback and trigger support for the DualSense controller. After having a PS5 for about a year now, I still find these implementations to be pretty cool and fun to feel. You'll feel Jin's heartbeat pulsating through your fingers when your health is low. You'll feel the melodies of the shakuhachi when played, and even your sword as you sheath and unsheath it. You will also hear your sword clashing with enemy weapons and shields through the controller speakers, paired with the subtle vibration feedback. During those intense sword locking duel moments, these sensations are emphasized further. The haptic triggers come into play for the archery and some grappling hook mechanics. It's a nice touch. The game was already visually stunning and this performance boost is sweet. Load times have also been reduced greatly. Not that they were that long before, but everything is basically instant now and less time waiting is always welcome. If you want to get into even more details about quality and performance comparisons between the consoles, I recommend that you check out the most recent analysis made by the guys over at Digital Foundry. A link will be in the description for those interested. If they end up releasing a PC port in the future, I'm sure those guys will cover it as well. With New Game Plus, you'll be able to start a new game while getting to keep all of the skill, weapon, and cosmetic upgrades that you've obtained in your previous playthrough. This will actually skip over the setup that takes place during the first hour of the game and get you right into the open world with your horse. You'll also now be able to unlock two new armors in addition to several other cosmetics and charms. The lethal difficulty was added in patch 1.05, which heightens the intensity and swiftness of combat by increasing the lethality of sword strikes from enemies and yourself. After completing the game on hard mode, this is a nice feature to have. They also added a lower Thanks for watching this combat video. option. If you enjoyed it in any way, check out my other video clips from this review in the linked playlist, less or even watch the entire review if you'd like. Mechanics for Peace. those of you that may not be skilled with action games. Replayable duels in Mongol territories are one of my favorite additions. One thing you may notice as your journey draws to an end is that combat encounters are less frequent and less fulfilling. This of course falls in line with the progress you make in taking the island back but sort of leaves the world feeling a bit empty. Getting to retackle all of these encounters at any point in time makes it very convenient to relive those high intensity moments and dive right into some combat. In patch 2.0, additional controller options were added. While you could already customize PlayStation controller mappings to your heart's content in the system settings, it's always nice when you find a game that gives you the options so they actually update the button prompts and such. As a lefty with his own set of controls, I always welcome more controller options. I'm glad that they added alternate melee mappings which switch light and heavy sword attacks from square and triangle to R1 and R2, 
enabling better control of the analog sticks in combat.